reproduction or multiplication of viruses. To continue the chain of infection, viruses must undergo the process of replication to create new infectious variants. For this, first of all, virus gains entry into the cell by making physical contact with the plasma membrane of the target cell and then crosses the plasma membrane. Inside, it releases and replicates its genome while facilitating the manufacture of its protein using host ribosomes, right? Virus particles are assembled from these newly synthesized biological molecules and then become infectious virions. And finally, the virions are released from the cell to continue the process of infection. There are total seven stages of virus replication. Uh, these are attachment, penetration, uncoating, replication, assembly, maturation, and the last is release. First of all, attachment. To infect a cell, it is critical that a virus initiate attachment. Attachment means the binding of virus to the host cell. This interaction is specific. For this, a virus contains a virus attachment protein that absorbs to the cell surface receptor and cell surface has receptors on the cell. So these attachment, attachment proteins absorbed to the cell surface receptor which are present on the surface of the cell. Plasma membrane of the cell we know composed of a phospholipid bilayer plus has numerous proteins protruding from the membrane. These surface proteins have variety of functions that include transporting ions and molecules, facilitating the binding of one cell to another or acting as receptor for incoming proteins. Majority of the plasma membrane proteins are glycosylated, means have been modified with sugars and carbohydrates. The target receptor molecules on the cell surface are otherwise normal molecules that are required for cellular functions. Virus have evolved to exploit them, usually glycoproteins. For example, rhinovirus, it binds a protein known as intercellular adhesion molecule 1, ICM1, involved in attachment of one cell to another. Similarly, influenza A virus bind to silic acid sugar found at the end of cellular carbohydrate chain. Then herpes simplex virus, HSV, reversibly bind to glycosa minoglycans such as heparin sulfate. So in order to bind to the herpes virus and mediator proteins, these are present on the cell surface. Some viruses, for example HIV, also require core receptor to infect cells. For HIV, initially this virus binds to a protein known as CD4 on the surface of T cells, means T lymphocytes. But it also requires one or two co-receptors proteins to continue the process of infection. I will explain it with the help of this diagram. Uh, this is, process is beautifully presented by Lurton. Here you can see cell surface, membrane of the cell made up of phospholipid bilayer plus these proteins are present, detect as co-receptor for different type of the uh, viruses, right? As we were discussing HIV virus. For HIV, one virus receptor is CD4. But for infection, HIV virus also require co-receptors. 
right? Similarly, influenza virus. Receptor protein for influenza virus are silic acid. For measles virus, CD4-6. For herpes simplex viruses, heparin sulfate. For rhinoviruses, ICM-1. And for dengue virus, PC sign. Next step is penetration. Penetration means crossing the plasma membrane by virus. This process requires energy, but this energy is contributed by a host cell, not by virus. Several different mechanisms are utilized by viruses to gain entry into the cell. One of these is means commonly used mechanism is endocytosis. Endocytosis is receptor mediated process. It occurs when receptors on the cell surface are bound to their ligands and internalized in clathrin or cabulin coated that become endocyto, uh, endocytic vesicles, right? Eventually, these vesicles lose their clathrin or cabulin coating and then fuse with endosomes. As you can see here, the process of penetration. First step is fusion. This virus attached and then fuses with the plasma membrane of the cell. Here, second step is endocytosis. And this endocytosis, this vesicle, is cabulin mediated. And this is clathrin mediated. Simple vesicle is also there, non clathrin, non cabulin endocytosis. So, slowly and slowly, this, uh, these uh, vesicles, they become uncoated, that they lose their clathrin or uh, cabulin and ultimately fuses with endosomes. Right? Endosomes then deliver the material to lysosome. And we all know that lysosomes are larger vesicles full of digestive enzymes. So vesicles are present in the cell. As the pH of the endosome drops, the viral protein change configuration, means change its structure, which allows them to escape from the endosome. Right? Viruses that use clathrin mediated endocytosis to enter the cell are dengue virus, hepatitis, hepatitis C virus, or urovirus. Few well known viruses that infect humans, such as SV40 and papilloma viruses that cause warts or cervical, cervical cancer, use <coughs> cabulae mediated endocytosis. Next step is Uncoating. Uncoating means breakdown or removal of capsid, causing the release of virus genome into the cell or whatever genome replication and transcription will take place. Right? So, virus achieve uncoating in a variety of different ways. For example, rhinovirus. They are taken into the cell by receptor mediated endocytosis in clathrin coated vesicles. Within the acidic endosome, the virus expands in size about 4% and one of the capsid proteins that is viral protein 1 forms pore, pores in the endosome and that uh, those pores allow the release of rhinovirus RNA genome. On the other hand, influenza virus has viral protein known as uh, uh, hemagglutinin HA embedded into the virus envelope. So, HA binds to silic acid found on the surface of respiratory epithelial cells and the penetration occurred through receptor mediated endocytosis, right? So, low pH of endosome causes confirmation of change in the viral HA protein, uh, revealing a fusion peptide that brings the two membrane close together to fuse the viral envelope with endosomal membrane, right? 
released viral RNA genome segments then are transported to the nucleus and enter through the nuclear pore. Next, in the nucleus, replication process is there. To create new variants, proteins will be incorporated into the variant, uh, are made through expression of viral genes, and the viral genome is copied through the process of replication. The replication structure of the virus is generally dependent upon the type of nucleic acid. Uh, as we know that viruses contain it may be double stranded DNA viruses, single stranded DNA viruses, or double stranded RNA viruses, or positive sense RNA viruses, negative sense RNA viruses, and so on. So, here on the basis of different classes of the viruses, replication process takes place like class one. Here, double stranded. DNA is there. Double stranded DNA genome through replication produce double stranded DNA genome and through the process of transcription it produces mRNA and through translation then protein. Then protein and genome assemble and a complete virion particle is formed. Similarly in the other cases of viruses. Right? Next step is maturation. After the nucleic acid genome and other essential proteins are packaged within the capsid, which was assembled from one or several translated viral proteins, the final steps of virus replication occurs. Final steps are maturation and release. Up to this point, virion had been in the process of forming. If the cell were broken and then open at this point, virions would not be able to initiate infection of new cells. You should keep in mind, at this point, if virion, because at this point, virion had been in the process of forming. If cell wall broken open at this point, virion would not be able to initiate infection of new cells, right? So, Maturation refers to the final changes within an immature virion that result in an infectious virus particle. Structural capsid changes are often involved and these can be mediated by host enzymes or virus coded enzyme. The final process is, final step is release. Final step in Virus replication cycle is release of virion into extracellular environment, right? Where it can continue the cycle of infection with new cells. Release can occur in several different manners depending upon the virus. Viruses can obtain their envelope from the plasma membrane, generally assemble uh, on the inside layer of the plasma membrane, and embedding their envelope proteins into the plasma membrane. As the viral capsid proteins interact, membrane-associated viral protein cause the plasma membrane to begin curving around the capsid. This continues until the plasma membrane is completely wrapped around the virus, which leaves and then means virion, then leaves the cell. This process is known as budding. I will show you this budding process in this picture you can see here formation of buds so this was all about reproduction and multiplication of viruses thank you